I was going to say, guess what I'm going to talk about, but <laughs> I think you just heard it. It can actually reach the same decibel, I hope not. Decibel level is a pneumatic drill at full throttle. In fact, you may as well bed down on Heathrow flight path. Thank you, Vaughan. Let's try to get some sleep next to someone who snores at 90 decibels, because Concorde's only 102. Melvin Schwitzer, listen, don't joke. Don't joke. Bit close to home there. Snore? Moi? Yes, yes. Boo. Uh, <laughs> well, rather. Whose wife is uh, <laughs> fortunately you, for, for her <laughs> death in one ear is in the Guinness Book of Records as the loudest snorer in Britain. Once upon a time, not so long ago, there lived in the land of Nod a little man with a very big snore. Night after night, the earth would quake and the trees would tremble because of the terrible noise he made. His poor wife hadn't had a wink of sleep for years, and one night she decided she could take it no longer. First, she bought some special pyjamas with a ball sewn in the back of the collar to stop him lying on his back. But they made him thrash about so much in discomfort that she got shoved out of the bed. Then the wife resorted to shock therapy. But she had to turn the voltage up so high, she only succeeded in blowing the fuses. A nose clip to regulate his breathing brought temporary relief, but still her sleep was shattered. So powerful was the noise he made. Poor, poor woman. Worn out and weary from years of oral abuse, she was at her wit's end when, as luck would have it, the gods took pity on her plight and rendered her deaf in one ear. Now she sleeps happily beside her husband, and their marriage is, for the first time, truly peaceful and happy. Yes, we are talking laser surgery here. It seems to be getting everywhere, doesn't it? Uh, one of its pioneers, uh, Surgeon Veer Carlin, is here. A satisfied customer, Edward McCausland, at the end there, and the source of the racket we heard last night all over the northwest, Melvin Schwitzer. Schwitzer. Schwitzer, okay. Britain, you're Britain's loudest snorer. Yes. What have you been recorded at? 92 decibels. 92 decibels. And who, this is your wife, Julie, next Who entered you? you? Julie? Did yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. How do you stand? I mean, I know you're, you're, you're a bit deaf in one ear, but even so, how do you stand it? Well, a lot of poking, pushing. <laughs> I do actually. Yeah. I don't. You're snoring. I don't snore. How do you know? You're asleep. <laughs> Just turning him over sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But I have another advantage. He doesn't snore every night and he doesn't snore all night. So it's not a continual thing. And how about yours? Before you have the opportunity, we'll talk about it in a second. How loud were you snoring? Well, okay. uh, the wife and family, the rest of the family, if I was in bed, they could hear me above the television. Really? All over the house, basically? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my. And the neighbours have moved. <laughs> You're joking! Well, they've moved before I had the operation. I don't know if it's because of me, but... <laughs> Rumour had it that it was. Yeah. Okay, Veer, what's the, what's the technique then? What's the surgery which can, which can do more than any other technique that's been discovered so far? Well, there are two essential techniques. The, the, there is a, a technique that's been around for about eight years. Um, what we nickname it the, uh, the U3P. Mm. <laughs> Handy little nickname. Yeah. The U3P. Why, why? What's that? Well, it's, the, the proper name for it is the uvulopharyngoplasty. See why you have the nickname. It's that little kind of thing that hangs down at the back of the throat. Yes. Yeah. Of which we have a picture, actually. Yeah. The uvula. Mm -hmm. The uvula, there it is. Mm -hmm. That's it. How charming. Yeah. Oh, so, and that's what does it. I mean, it's the vibration of that, is it, that makes the snore? That's right. It's the vibration of, the, of that and the palate's edge itself that uh, makes the noise. A bit like a soft pair of maracas <laughs> banging against each other. Yes. Okay, so what do you do? Well, the laser? It, all, both techniques, both the laser technique and the original technique, are. Um, designed to stiffen up the palate so that it can no longer vibrate and make the sound. Mm -hmm. And so how, so how does that work? Well, the laser technique um, does it by removing pieces of mucosa from the surface of the palate, and the scarring that results from that then tightens up the palate and mm -hmm. prevents it from vibrating. Is this a total cure-all? Are we saying anybody who has this operation will no longer snore? No, I'm afraid there are very few operations, if any, that can actually guarantee that. But mm. Um, the success rate um, over a five-year period is, is approximately 75%. And, right. that's, and that's, as far as you know, permanent, if it's over five yes, years? Yes, yes. And are you complete, a completely silent sleeper now? Well, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, I know the wife said she can get a decent night's sleep now. She can? Yes, it's already done. 
Do, do you feel tempted? Do you feel tempted for Melvin to do this? No, no, I wouldn't put him through an operation. I'm quite, I've put up with it, so I'm quite happy. I wouldn't ask but him to But it's not painful, operation. is it, this laser surgery? It is. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I was just trying to do your job here, you know, I'm going to drum up a bit of custom. OK, it's, it's agonising. It's like a tonsillectomy, is it? <laughs> it's, it's very similar to a tonsillectomy, perhaps even slight, slightly worse. Uh, and to a large extent, we can control that. But, but nevertheless, I think everybody who's had it would agree it, it is a painful procedure. But, but uh, isn't the danger of a tonsillectomy in, old, in, in later years uh, the risk of hemorrhaging later? Um, presumably, this carries no attendant risk, is it? Well, the risk of tonsillectomy is the same, really, whether it's done uh, at a young age or as an adult. And, and one of the risks is, is hemorrhage. Mm. But it's, it's a very tiny risk, uh, less than 1%. It's not painful, no, 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 Richard. No, no, no. <laughs> it really isn't painful, you know. It's not that much. No, not as bad as Melvin. I think we should. I think I should measure the death spell. <laughs> if you say it's intermittent, which is strange, why is it? Very briefly, do you know why people snore some nights and not others? I do. Do you? Come on. Yeah, because um, I can snore to order. If if they want me to snore t tonight, I'd great and have a few beers, and it's alcohol related and a late meal, and I expect the doctor will. Is it alcohol related, really? Because I'm snoring. Yeah. yeah, it makes me snore a lot later, you know. No more GNTs for you. That's it. No, no more GNTs. Well, I've had a lovely program today, haven't I? Thanks for us indeed. Thanks for coming in. Can you get it on the other?